This time it's the turn of security in Microsoft 365 and specifically we're looking at an important component in Microsoft's Defender Suite. This is app governance. What is it? How does it work? And most importantly, what can it do for you? Stay tuned. Today's video is sponsored by SquareX for the ultimate in browser detection and response. Visit them today at squarex.com. Hi everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and a warm welcome to the channel, especially if you've not been here for a while. On this episode, I thought I'd take a look at app governance, which is an important component in the Microsoft Defender XDR suite. App governance or application governance is absolutely critical at identifying potentially dodgy apps in your infrastructure. And it's super important because there are great policies that you can use in order to set up a an additional line of defense. Now we need to understand what the apps are actually doing. So for example, that 10 pin bowling game, why does it need access to your camera contacts or your microphone? That's not right. So app governance is an absolute must for admins and security folks alike. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, bump that subscribe button and ring that bell and come and join my learning community. We're almost at 183,000 subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. And I really do appreciate each and every one of you. It, just a quick mention, if you've got questions and comments, as always, uh, get those down below. So I think without any further jibber jabber, I think we should jump in and take a look at app governance. Enjoy. All right then. So I'm kicking off my demo here in the admin.microsoft.com portal, and I'm going to go into the security portal, which you can get there directly by going into uh, security.microsoft.com. I've scrolled down and I've come into my cloud apps here, and there is a little feature here called app governance. Now I have to say, this is just one of those little features, which is so easily missed, but to be quite frank, it's so important. And to give you an idea, if I flip over here into chat GPT, we all know chat GPT, it looks like Copilot, strangely enough. But if you click on the plus symbol and add from apps, it gives you the option here to connect to your OneDrive or even worse, connect to your Microsoft OneDrive for business. And of course, this means that it's going to start ingesting all your corporate data unless of course you've got the paid for version. This is the free version. So just to be very, very careful with that. In the past, I've said, if you want to block that, what you need to do is you need to come into your identity portal and here in your identity portal, AKA Microsoft Enter ID, what you would do is you would come down into applications enterprise applications. And in here we have something called consent and permissions. And this is essentially where you set your consent for what we call OAuth apps. What do I mean by OAuth apps? Well, if I try and connect my chat GPT to my OneDrive for business, this is an OAuth prompt. So you can see this is what the app is going to require from you. So sign in, maintain access to your data that you've given access to, read files. So, oh my goodness, this could be really quite serious. Do you want to give ChatGPT access to all of this? Typically, this is where you would block that. Why are we talking about application governance? Well, app governance is a really neat tool because what this does is it basically looks for those overprivileged apps within your organization. And it actually works alongside the OAuth apps feature here. And interestingly, you can see it's uh, what was here. They've now integrated it into app governance. So if I come into app governance now, you get the little overview here. If I go into Microsoft 365, you can see these are my 
OAuth based apps here. And you can see at the moment they, they're all enabled and to be honest, they're all looking pretty good. Now, the one concerning thing, these are just demo apps, of course, but you can see here on the far right hand side, it shows me the privilege level that these apps are actually looking at. If I click onto this app, you can see now, tell me about the app. It's showing me the amount of data that the app is using, which users currently have an account. So again, 43 connected users here, all the permissions. So a breakdown of the permissions that it's using, as well as any sensitivity labels that you've assigned to the app. So yes, you need to maybe think about putting policies in place in order to protect you from potentially vulnerable apps. App governance is a really nice feature. It shows you at a glance how many apps you've got in your environment, how many overprivileged apps do you have? And again, you get that little summary here at the bottom. I'm going to click onto policies because this is where the real power of this comes in. And oh, by the way, you've got the Microsoft 365 or any apps that are connected to Microsoft 365. Also, you can see that you've got other policies here as well. And those other policies are indeed those OAuth policies that I just went to show you. So you can see here that it says malicious code app consent. So that's really quite concerning. So I can take a look at this particular app and again, an idea of just how many permissions it's actually looking at. So you can see here that this particular policy, if it detects any kind of OAuth app that's kind of not right, what it's going to do is it's going to assign it a high risk policy. Now, what you can do is, of course, you can alert an admin or a admin team or a service desk or somebody like that. Now, as well as sending an alert, I love this, that you can also, uh, for example, create a playbook. So you can create an automation in Power Automate, for example, which I think is awesome. So there we go. That's just a quick thing on how you can manage the alert there. Along with that, I'm going to now flip over into Microsoft 365. And as I said, really useful because it shows you how long the app's been in, what type of app, app it is, um, the consent types or who's consented to this particular app and so on. So another way that you can manage your apps are through these policies here. So I'm going to come into my policies and again, at a glance, you can see that at the moment we've got 10 active apps and again, you can see how many that we've got disabled. So there's basically a couple of kinds of policies that you've got. You can create a regulated app use. There's also a secure app permissions, but there are other options here as well. Now you can either just create one of these kind of pre-configured policies, or you can actually go ahead and do your own. And as you can see, it's based on a series of templates. So you can base the app on, for example, usage. So if you've got an app that has a sudden increase in the number of users, or an app that's suddenly and unusually using a lot of data. Um, again, that could be concerning. Um, likewise, again, just rolling back to that uh, chat GPT option that I just showed you, we can go to permissions. So you might want to flag up an app that's overprivileged or a new app with a non-graph API permission that you shouldn't be supporting. Also, a new highly privileged app, which might start the alarm bells off. In terms of that, you can also have a look at an unverified app or an uncertified app as well. So maybe it's an app that you're not supporting or an app that's gaining access to sensitive data. Again, as the one I just gave you a little uh, look at there. Or of course, you can also create your own policy as well, which of course you're quite within your right to do so. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to base this on usage. So if there is a sudden and unusual increase in the number of users or a new app with a high data usage. So I could say that you can see I'm now configuring that template. Puts in the title, puts in a little bit of description. It's putting in a severity level of medium. And of course you could go ahead and you could configure that. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click on next. And in terms of the policy setting, the scope, who do I want it to impact? Am I just going to apply those default settings or do I want to customize the policy as well? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to customize the policy. So I'm basically saying, okay, identify the apps that will be covered by this policy. Are you going to use all apps, only specific apps or apps all acts except this particular one. So for this uh, example, I'm going to use all apps. Also, I'm going to specify the app attributes conditions. So do you want to apply the default conditions? Uh, again, and you can see it's picked up the no here and you can add in those conditions. So you can see that we've got the rules and app uh, registration age within the last seven days. And again, it's covering high data usage. But if you wanted to add to this, again, you can easily just customize this and add in those additional conditions. So things like data usage trends, overprivileged apps, priority account access, and so on. So all of that can be easily picked up and configured. So if it finds these apps, what do you want me to do? Obviously not delete them because they may not be your apps, but what you can do is you can disable the app. So this basically disables or prevents anyone from accessing the resources by deactivating it in Microsoft Entra. So again, you might want to click onto that. So are we ready to set the policy up? Are you ready for it to be active? Are you ready for it to be disabled if you're not quite ready? I'm going to click on active. I'm going to click on next. Again, you get that nice summary and off it goes and it will now create that policy, which it's now done. So should anything happen and if there are any alerts and it picks up that app, again, it will generate an alert, but it will also give you a nice kind of overview as well. And again, you can drill in and have a look at those incidents. And again, you can investigate those incidents as well. Likewise, if it discovers any apps that are a little bit concerning, you might want to click into here, have a look at those apps in more detail. And again, you can then decide on exactly what you want to do and how you wish to proceed. So as I said, very, very useful. It's a small topic, but super important in this kind of age of OAuth apps and consent. We shouldn't blindly trust all these OAuth based apps because they really can cause quite a few problems. So there you have it, app governance in Microsoft Defender and Microsoft 365, an absolutely critical uh, feature that admins and security folks need to know alike. Hey, listen, I really hope that you've enjoyed the session. If you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below and it's great to see you again. Okay, have a great week. I'll see you next time.